What's up, guys? Salute! Welcome back to Country Bunkers Trains. It's been a minute. How you been? I hope all is well and you're having a great spring. Haven't been super active posting videos lately, but it has been a very busy month for the train room or train room related. Like I mentioned in our last video last month, a couple buddies and me headed north for the Spring York TCA train show. Had a fantastic time. Had a great time hanging out for the week with friends, meeting up with old friends, meeting new friends, and of course, buying new toys. <laughs> no, man, it was. It was an absolute blast. But honestly, the highlight of that trip was getting to meet a bunch of you guys, finally being able to put faces to names and the screen names and whatnot. That was definitely the highlight of the trip, getting to meet a lot of you. Since returning from the York trip, I've also paid a couple visits to my local store. Man, we've had a lot, and I mean a lot, of new product trickling in here to the train room. Not just from York or from the train store, but from a bunch of other different places and things that have been going on. A lot of really, really cool stuff we can hopefully check out sometime soon. But with all of that going on, I did have a couple of buddies come over a couple weeks ago. They came to spend the night, help me out on the layout. And during that night, we got to run some of their trains over on the second layout. That was a bunch of fun. But during that weekend, we also went over to a friend of ours, Brad. He's a local guy. He lives across town about 20 minutes away. We've seen his layout on the channel here before, but we got to spend some time over there running trains and just having an all-around good time. Like I say, a whole lot of stuff's been going on this month. But the big news, of course, is the construction of our new layout. Any of my free time or spare time that I've had for the train room has been spent building the new layout, and it's moving right along. Coming out pretty good, I do believe. I figured that's what we would check out today, do a quick update and see where the layout's currently sitting. Honestly, I was pretty surprised while we were at York. Pretty much everyone that I spoke to or talked with was quite interested in asking me about the new layout. I was, I was pretty touched by that. I'm glad to see you guys are just as excited about this new layout as am I. But what do you say we check it out? And here she is, guys. Here's our new layout and where the train room is currently standing over here. Man, isn't this looking good? Looking a lot different from that previous layout we used to have over here. And I'm liking it. Looks a lot neater and, dare I say, a lot more professional than the one that was here before. <laughs> and you know what? We're almost at a point where we can start running trains over here again. I'm really looking forward to that. While this has been going on, I've been down to just two tracks running over here on the second layout. And it feels quite naked and lonely in here, especially after you're used to running six, seven tracks at a time. But yeah, before I get ahead of myself... What do you say we pick up where we left off in the last video? I'll try and go through everything as quickly as I can. Let's start off with the wall over here. If you remember from our last video, I went ahead and got our brand used Glenn Snyder shelvings installed on the wall, and I mentioned how I had two left over. Well, I decided to go ahead and get those installed on this wall as well. I installed this bottom run or bottom shelf here, and I got a couple of our big articulateds stored up here at the moment. Just as the other engines I mentioned before, these are in our normal roster or normal routine of running. So these will be easily grabbed or accessible to swap out on the tracks. I went ahead and got the last shelf installed above the slider over there. And currently I just have some post-war inspired passenger cars up there. Honestly, this will probably end up being engine storage or engine space eventually. But for now, it got these coaches out of the spare room and clean up a little bit of the clutter in there. Next up is one of the coolest things we've added to the train room in a while, and that is this switch lantern or switch light. How cool is this thing? I love it. <laughs> now, I wish I could tell you what railroad it came from or where it came from. I looked all over it, but I cannot find any markings on it, so I'm really not sure where it actually came from, but I don't care. I still had to have it. I went ahead and went to Home Depot, picked up some cheap shelving brackets and a cheap piece of shelving wood, cut that down to fit it to this size, and we got it mounted on the wall. I really like it. Now, of course, we had to illuminate it. We couldn't put it up there, you know, just sitting there dead. So I also, while at Home Depot, I picked up one of those Build-A-Lamp kits. I ripped out the original lighting hardware that was in it, 
I really did not want to trust it, and I don't know what kind of bulb it took. It looked like it originally took some industrial style bayonet type bulb, something like that. Again, I really don't know, and I didn't care to look it up. But I got that stuff ripped out, and I installed the new Build-A-Lamp kit, and it turned out really, really well. I got a 40-watt LED bulb in there, and I really like the light that it shines out down on the table. I think it's really cool. Now, quick shameless plug. You guys always hear me mentioning Roundhouse South Trains located in Port Orange, Florida, but this is a prime example of why. Both this switch lantern as well as our brand-used Glenn Snyder shelving came from Roundhouse South Trains. He never ceases to amaze me with the product that comes in there. Now, he has a great website, which I'll post a link to in the description below. But as I always say, man, you guys really got to go into the store if you're able. He has all kinds of cool stuff you'd never imagine coming across in that store. But man, he sure does have it. Like I say, he has a great website, but a lot of the product isn't on there because it's so good. It moves so fast. It doesn't have a chance to make it to the website. And again, like I say, this is a prime example. I just happened to walk in at the perfect timing and pick this thing up. And what couldn't have worked out any better. If you're ever in the Port Orange or Daytona, Florida area, definitely make it a point to check out Roundhouse South Trains. And lastly, for the wall over here, as you can see, we've got a new backdrop installed. If you remember the old backdrop, it was showing its age. It was starting to sag and get a couple creases and wrinkles in it. Rather than trying to doctor or fix it up, I had this section of backdrop left over from the piece that I installed over on the second layout, and I figured, why not get it installed over here? And I think it came out quite well. What do you guys think? I was really hoping I could wrap it around the trim on each side, but unfortunately, it just wasn't long enough to do that. But it was big enough to fit perfectly in place where that old backdrop used to be. And now we get to the star of the show, the layout itself. When we left off in our last video, we just had the bare framework and particle board installed, and that was it. And the first thing to tackle was all the seams on the particle board, and for that, I used this joint compound. Now, I did not use any drywall tape or anything like that, just the compound by itself, but I took my spreader and got all those gaps filled in. Once that had dried and I was able to sand it nice and smooth, we did go ahead and paint it. Now, I do apologize. I messed up in the last video. I kept thinking this color I picked out was a desert color, but I was wrong. This is actually called Toasted Bagel. This is available at Home Depot as well. But I went ahead and got the entirety of the table painted. And I really like this color. It's a nice earth tone, kind of a dirt color. It came out quite well, in my opinion. Now, because I didn't install any drywall tape, this joint compound did do exactly what I knew it was going to do. We're in a sunroom. You're going to have expansion and con contractions and whatnot. So we did get, you can kind of see in some spots, some some fine cracks. There is a, a better view of one right there. So we did get a couple cracks in it, but that's fine. We're not going for a level five finish. This is just a, a train table. It's not a wall. And on top of that, we're never going to see this when the layout is done. All of this is going to be covered with ground cover, accessories, so on and so forth. We're never going to see this paint anyway. The two purposes of this paint is to seal the bare wood, to give us a nice surface to apply our glues and whatnot to, but also to cover the bare wood. That way, in the future, if any of our ground cover gets knocked loose or whatnot, we're not seeing just bare table. We got at least this brown textured color underneath. As you can see, I already got some small spots here and there that I got to do some touch up to. Working on the layout, it gets some nicks here and there. No big deal. But while I was at it, just the other day, I went ahead and painted our bottom speaker shelf the same color. I was planning on originally painting this black. I thought I had some left over from a previous project. But it turns out I don't, and I figured since I had so much of this left over, I might as well use it. I mean, hell, I already bought it. I still got to finish this up. I don't know if I'm going to trim it out or just use curtains or whatnot, but that'll look a lot better than just bare wood down there, too. With the tabletop nicely finished out, it was time to get our fancy new trim installed. This is just one by six trim board that you can find at any of your local home supply stores. Used one by six all around the perimeter of the layout, except for the space above the shelf. 
that's one and a half or one and a quarter molding trim that I had left over from the previous layout. And it worked out quite well in that area, which we'll get to here in a bit. But after I got this all nailed to the table, I sunk the nails in a little bit deeper and went over it with some wood filler, some plastic wood filler, and got that sanded nice and smooth. And then we could start staining. It was uh, quite the interesting trip staining all of this in here. I had plastic sheets everywhere. It looked like a murder scene. <laughs> but yeah, here's the products I used. And to be completely honest with you, I don't know if I can in good conscience say I recommend this Verithane uh, stain. I don't know, man. Each time I open this can, I get a different color. Even if I prep it, stir it, and apply it in the exact same manner, each time I get a different color hue out of this thing. I don't know. Maybe I got a bad or goofy can. Maybe it's operator error. I don't know how. Hell, it might could be the wood itself, but I don't see how that could be because it's all pine. Everything stained in here is pine. But yeah, I, I don't know. Regardless, this is what I use. This is Verithane gunstock color. And then I went, it got three coats of stain, and then it got three coats of urethane gloss on top of that. Give it a nice, deep, rich look to the wood. But yeah, like I say, each time I open this can, I seem to get a different color hue out of it. The first time I opened it was to do the trim on the layout. And as you can see, we got kind of a nice lighter tone to it. I really like how that originally turned out. I did have to redo this section of trim right here on the front of the layout, which I'll get into here in a moment. I don't know how well the camera will show it, but you can see how much darker this piece of trim is compared to the original trim that we installed. Again, I don't know how well the camera is going to show that off. And then for our shelf, uh, again, all of this is out of the same exact can, but for our shelf, we got a color kind of in between the lighter color and darker color up here. Now, I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm still real happy with how it all turned out. But yeah, it kind of left me a little bit baffled. I don't know. I do really like the urethane gloss on it. I didn't go crazy. I didn't sand the wood down with 500, 600, or 800 grit sandpaper. So it's not super, super glossy, but it has just enough gloss to give a nice effect, but not be overbearing, if that makes any sense. While on the topic of stain and wood, figure I should give a quick mention for our new shelf down here. Really, really happy to have this. Extra storage in the train room is always a good thing. <laughs> Especially here, it's badly needed. But yeah, nothing special with this. This is built in the exact same fashion as our OG shelving that's on the walls from back in the day, which we've gone over. Like I say, nothing special. It's just one by four wood. I do have a backer on this. Got a sheet of, I think it's eighth inch pine installed on the back to hide the framework behind it. And it does have some legs in the back too that go down to the floor. Came out pretty well for the most part. Good old Home Depot wood. All, some nice twists and curlies in it here and there. But hey, we made it work. And like I mentioned, this got the same treatment as the trim work. This did get three coats of stain and three coats of urethane. Next up was really the main objective for this layout. And that was our new swinging bridge for the entrance here. And as you can see, we finally got it. This really turned into more of a, a project and a bit of a headache than I originally thought that it was going to. But yeah, my buddy Fred came over the other week and we were talking. And as you guys knew in the last video, I was going back and forth between doing just one bridge, three individuals, yada, yada, yada. Well, he came up with the great idea. Why not try and have the best of both worlds? Make it one bridge, but make it look like or try to look like three individual bridges. And so that's what we went with. We picked up this piece of three quarter inch plywood, not particle board, hoping for extra strength, which we do seem to have gotten with this plywood. And he cut it out to make it look like three individual bridges. Now, of course, I do have more work to do. I want to install uh, girder plates on the side and whatnot. This isn't the finished end result. This is just the bare bones to get it up and functioning. But we got this cut out and we started to go install the hinges. And that's where our headache really came into play. So initially I wanted to have the hinges hidden under the bridge. That way you couldn't see them. So I went out and picked up the fancy cabinet style hinges. These lift up when they open, or at least they're supposed to. You see how they lift up and swing out. These things would not work, man. Man, we were trying it for hours. 
tried mounting them every which way. It just, it wasn't happening. We could get the wood to clear the wood on the table itself, but once you add in the extra height of the track, there was just no workaround for it. It just, it simply was not going to work. And we had four of these mounted under here, uh, trying to work and support it together. It just, it was a mess. I, we ended up destroying this piece of trim on the face of the layout. That's why I said earlier I had to replace this. But anyway, I went back to the drawing board. And after a bunch of research, I just ended up going with these basic gate hinges. Butterfly hinges, whatever you want to call them. Now, the secret to these is that you got to have the actual hinge above the height of the track. Some voodoo mathematical magic happened in there. <laughs> but hey, I don't argue with it because it works. Our bridge lifts up. You can gain entry. And you can see the track all clears nice. Everything's kosher and everything's working. It seems to be strong and sturdy, steady enough. For the other side, I've just got a, I think that's one and a half by one and a half support to hold the bridge up. And then I've got some keys placed on the bridge to hold it in place. That way it doesn't get shuffled around and the track work stays straight and smooth. For cutting the track to make this work, all I used was a 16th inch or 8th inch cutoff wheel on my, my grinder. And I just buzzed it off where needed. And as you can see, it worked out perfect. I did drill uh, some extra holes and added extra screws for the track work to hold it center and in place. That way there was no possibility of this stuff moving around. So there is a little bit more screws here for the track work. But I mean, that kind of goes without saying, being on a swinging bridge. I do still have some refinements to do on this bridge. I'm still tinkering with it here and there. Those keyways or centering pins I was showing you, I'd like to sand those down a little bit. That way it's a little bit easier and smoother coming back down. But overall, it's working great, and I'm, I'm quite happy with it. I was really kind of dreading this, but we got it done. It's in here, and hopefully it'll be working here quite soon. And that leaves us with the new track work. I just got this installed the other night, and just last night was doing some track testing, and it passed with flying colors. I wanted to get the loops tested out before I did the final wiring and did it, getting it all in place just to discover we had an issue and then I had to take it all back apart. But like I say, we're in good shape. It passed with flying colors. We're good to go. Now, while I have been installing this stuff, I have been weathering the track as I go. For weathering it, I'm using the Woodland Scenics Rusty Rail paint marker, paint pen. And this stuff works out quite well. Gives a really, really nice effect. I am going to have to do a second coat on them. You can see in spots where it's pretty light. But I really like how this turned out. Much better than just the shiny rail brand new out of the box. For attaching the track to the table, I'm just using the, the Atlas O screws. Now these are nice. They obviously go along with the track and fit it perfect. But I have discovered you got to be real careful with them. The screw, it's a real soft material and the heads on the screws really like to strip out. So you got to make sure you're using the correct bit that fits them just right. Otherwise, it's a real pain stripping that head out, and then you're trying to dig that screw out. Ask me how I know. <laughs> now, for the road bed, I am kind of going against the rules here. According to the instructions, and of course, everyone online, I'm using the Woodland Scenics road bed, and you're supposed to glue this to the table as you go and lay the track that just sounded like a huge headache and quite a mess, to be honest with you. I didn't see a need for the glue. Once you screw this track down, it sandwiches that road bed in there real nice. It doesn't move around. It's locked down and in place. So yeah, I skipped the glue to hell with that. I mean, it, like I say, that just sounded like a big mess to me and a headache trying to get that lined up, the track lined up, then having to glue it. Nah, I'll just screw it down and sandwich it in place. And that's worked out quite well. I guess I should talk about the actual loops themselves since we're talking about the track, right? <laughs> All right, so our new track plan, loops, whatever you want to call it for the table. Our inner loop is 072, our middle loop is 081, and our outer loop is now 090. We got them big boy sizes now. <laughs> we'll be able to run all of our big stuff on this track. Now, in the future, this will have an elevated line once again. That is going to be the one line that is shared in between the layouts. 
that is going to remain 054 track work because of the sizing restraints we have on the second layout behind me. That's just going to have to stay 054. That's why I bumped it up to 090 on the outer edge of this one. That way we could run at least all our big stuff over here on this table. Now, I do admit it does look pretty boring and bland at the moment, just being three, you know, circles. But it's the catch-22 of it. It is what it is here in a smaller space. But the bright side of that is, although this isn't as intricate of a track plan that we've had in the past, we have got a lot more track now because we're using all this space over here. So the loops are actually bigger. When it comes time for scenery and whatnot, we'll definitely make this look a lot better when that time comes. But for now, yeah, it's just three boring circles. There's nothing I can do about that. And one last thing I wanted to mention, I could not fit any elevations into this track work. I really wanted to try and do that like we've done on the second layout, have some inclines and some declines. But because of the setup that this layout's going to be, there's just not enough space for it, unfortunately. So the track does have to stay flat. Like I say, we are going to have a track running overhead of it, so we can't run up into that. I do plan on having some stuff back there that the tracks can't run up into, and also buildings and whatnot. They're just, there's just simply not enough space, so they do have to remain flat on the table. But like I say, we can disguise and make it look a lot better with scenery in the future. All right, I got a quick bonus for us. I wasn't going to share this in this video. I was going to do it in another one, but it is part of the layout. And since we're doing a layout update, we might as well, right? It's actually one of my big York purchases. You guys ready for it? Check this thing out. <laughs> How cool is this? This is one of them big, beautiful bridges from trainlayouts.com. This is one of the main reasons and one of the main pieces I wanted to pick up while going to York. Man, I can't believe I finally got one. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. Now, for the past many months, I had been contemplating and hemming and hawing on contacting trainlayouts.com and having them build me a bridge that I could pick up from them at York. But like I say, I just kept contemplating and hemming and hawing over it. Finally, as we got closer, I said, screw it. If they happen to have one at the show, Cool, I'll grab it. If not, you know, it is what it is, and we'll do this at a later time. But I had high hopes because I've seen a lot of their products last year, and I figured they would have something. And as you can see, they did not disappoint. Now, I don't think this, this is their kind of standard bridge on their website. This one doesn't have a fancy name like some of their other bridges. I think this is just their truss bridge. But as you can see, this is a single track, five foot long bridge. It's got plenty of spacing in between the deck of the bridge and the railings up top so we can run our bigger stuff like our double stacks and our electric engines with their pantographs up, whatnot. Yeah, just a very, very impressive bridge. The bridge has an aluminum framework underneath and then it's got this like, what is this, press board, particle board type material to make the bridge itself. It's all laser cut. Just an absolutely gorgeous piece. Now, this bridge is going to be getting installed over here in front of the sliding door. Like I was saying, the upper loop is going to be shared in between the layouts. So the current plan, those two tracks are going to come down from that bridge over there, enter here. One's going to go off this way over the bridge, go around the layout, come around behind me, and then come back around over here and go off and then back off into our second layout. We will have to make another swinging bridge for that upper loop, but we'll deal with that when the time comes. For now, I just can't wait to get this thing installed and get one more step closer to getting these loops as well as this upper loop with this bridge running. I do plan on decking this bridge out. I'm thinking currently of painting it black, but I'll, I want to get it nicely weathered up, make it look a little run down, make it blend in with the other scenery on the other layout. I'm just super stoked and excited over this thing. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, that's where we're currently sitting. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And if you have any ideas or suggestions, I'd love to hear them too. The next plan of attack, kind of like what I was saying, I got to get the track all wired up, finish weathering the track, and then I got to build our new command center. And hopefully we can have trains running over here once more. Real excited for that. But anyways, guys, as always, until next time, my name is Zach, and this is Country Bunkers Trains. Y'all take care.
I'll see you the next go around.